Welcome to the podcast series The New Student Pharmacist, where we discuss chemistry and pharmacy, as well as leaders in pharmacy careers, community, and chemistry and pharmacy research. We encourage you to support the work we are doing and follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts by subscribing for free. Note, the views on the podcast represent those of my guest and I. Purpose of these episodes not at all, for advice or medical suggestions. These are aimed to provide support to peer pharmacists in training in educational and intellectually stimulating ways. Again, these are not at all for medical advice or medical suggestions. Please see your local board and state certified health professional. The views of this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Okay, welcome to the new student pharmacist podcast experience. It's so good to have you listening in today. Oh man, you're in for a treat. This is the new student pharmacist podcast. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, sometimes Stitcher, Ghana, um, TuneIn, a variety of platforms. Um, we're so glad to have you listening in. On this podcast, we discuss sciences, careers, community impact, research. We discuss impactful student athlete stories and we also impact successful, we also discuss successful entrepreneurs and their work in communities. So we're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is Julio Rodriguez. Oh man, this is, I mean, this is a thrill because I've known Julio for about, it would take uh, six years. And a good colleague and friend of mine so i'll just briefly introduce him and then we'll get started today so julio we met at taylor university excellent powerhouse for a lot of students then he did his ms so he did his bachelor's degree in kinesiology and exercise science at taylor um he did his master's of science um, in clinical exercise physiology at ball state there's a variety of different certifications he has served as a personal fitness trainer and health coach a research assistant exercise physiologist at Ball Memorial Hospital, an exercise physiologist at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, and he currently has an online cancer exercise trainer and health coach program called Oncolo Fit. Um, he's stationed in the U.S. Uh, he has done a lot so far in his career. Very, very accomplished young man. Um, he's married, um, has a lot of certifications, um, and he has degrees as well. And he's a person of faith, by the way. So it's definitely good to have him on as a guest. Okay, Julio, so let's begin. Thank um, you so much. I, I really appreciate just being on. I'm excited for this. So, I'm ready. Yeah, good. yeah, this is good. So what have been your long-standing interest in the field of science? Do you mind sharing some of those? Yeah, you know, ever since I, I was young, science was probably the class I was a little bit better at. Um, I did a little bit of math, but um, I was just a really curious individual. Um, and when I was told, you know, when I was looking to go into college, I was told, study something that you want to learn more about, something you like to read about. That was the only advice I got uh, when going into college. Mm -hmm. And I found myself reading a lot of anatomy, a lot of physiology, um, and I could just spend hours reading it and it didn't feel like work. I would look at the clock and it's like an hour went by and I was like, okay, well, that's weird, <laughs> right? Um, so I really got into kinesiology and I was in for a rude awakening, right? A lot of people think it's just like PE teachers, you know? Uh, but in reality, you're diving deep into the science of, of number one, health, but also exercise and also uh, medicine. And you're, you're looking at blood pressures, how exercise improves blood pressure, how exercise improves, you know, your heart, um, as well as, you know, performance. So uh, it really just started with my interest in anatomy and then it just developed 
into anatomy and physiology and then a little bit into biochemistry and then chemistry so that's kind of how it started yeah, dude, that's good so several things i'll say i actually have a follow-up question that one of my friends one of my friends who i work with um in the pharmacy mentioned to me how he's interested in exercise physiology so what and he initially started off being interested in medicine and his interest in exercise physiology so he's now um, pursuing a path in which he you know, develops and learns more about it so what do you think would be the first step for someone in that stead or in that uh trajectory what's the first step if i was interested in exercise physiology what would be my first step i'm in college probably my second year or third year but i want to do what you're doing what's the first step? Yeah, the first one would be you got to take an intro to exercise class and that's going to be the determinant whether you actually want to be in it or not, uh, to be honest, because you're you got to learn how to write scientifically. You got to learn how to read literature. You're going to have to talk the talk in terms of the science lingo, right? It's not just, you know, do a deadlift because that's not really how the, the literature can be read depending on whether your performance or uh, more health focused uh, but really just starting to dive deeper into you know the classes uh, but also getting involved with helping people getting involved with the around the uh, different types of exercise because it's really a broad range you know there's those who want to help you know athletes you know run run faster get stronger get bigger right and there's others who are looking for you know how does exercise impact metformin how does exercise and uh, beta blockers go hand in hand. Does it affect, does it have a positive effect, a negative effect, you know? What are things to be aware of? Um, and then just dive deeper into different areas of literature. Uh, I found out very quickly that I did not like performance. We, I was reading about torque on, on a research study and I was like, this is terrible. Uh, but then I got into VO2 max and looking at uh, different exercise and beta blockers or exercise uh, and, and metformin, those are usually the more common ones. Um, and I was super interested in peak and I could read three or four research studies. So mm -hmm. kind of dive into different areas to see what's what's your your area that you're really intrigued about. Okay, yeah, that's good. So diving in, get, taking an intro class, getting your feet wet if you will. Um, yep. Understand whether it's something you're interested in. So how do you maintain view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? So I know You've done, you've worked at Ball Memorial, you've worked at Sylvester, and now you have your own um, entrepreneur uh, venture that you're working on now. Um, so how do you see the big picture when you face obstacles? What do you, how do you frame them? And how do you maintain a good perspective so that you're able to power through and thrive, if you will? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge with this career, at least that I've personally faced, is that, uh, you know, if you're a pharmacist, a doctor, uh, even a physical therapist, they're pretty prestigious fields, right? Um, so I think that's one of the, the challenges that you can kind of look at yourself, maybe not as important in the health field, maybe just as an allied health person, but you really get to make the greatest impact on the patients because you're, you're hand in hand working with them to improve, improve their blood pressure, improve their blood sugar, help them lose fat, um, help them build muscle, right? So I think really looking at the big picture of you're the one really helping them walking by their side uh and i think three emphases are our big key you know creating relationships creating and establishing long-term relationships yep. is super important yep. you know um also diving deeper into the literature and really learning and having solid foundation that when patients come to ask you questions you can answer them you know uh, I work closely with oncologists, with endocrinologists, and oncology. Oncology is a large field. The mm -hmm. oncologist does not know everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he can dive in deeper into the different areas, but he's not going to know everything. And that's where I kind of come in as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've had countless patients say, you know, hey, can I exercise? And their oncologist is like, oh, well, uh, I'm not sure. Here's a referral. Right? But that referral means the world to me because now I can actually help them and guide them and teach them, you know. Um, it's not that I'm better or worse, it's just different, right? So working with people and diving deeper into relationships, having a good, strong foundation, and also being willing to work with other individuals, right? Work closely with your oncologist or work closely with the cardiologist. Um, give them feedback. Work with a nurse. I've worked with a nutritionist, dietitianist, respiratory therapist. And the more that they are connected, or even pharmacists, the more that they're connected with what you do, the more likely they are to refer, the more likely they are to help their patients even further rather than just kind of seeing them on the weekly, right? 
uh, I work with several oncologists and we're a topic of conversations. You know, are you exercising? Are you meeting with him daily, right? Um, are you working with him? And they get feedback from me, but they also like to get the feedback from patients as well. Yeah, dude, that's very good. And you also, I'm glad you mentioned that because we could go to town for a minute on this. You know, this perspective, yeah, dude, this perspective of, you know, I, I don't know if small is even the right word to use. I don't know. But I would say more granular. How granular components make a large difference in like how things function like an electron as small as it may be transitioning from one atom or one atom to another could make a big difference in the chemical bond whether it be a radical transfer or something like that i won't, don't want to talk shop on this show but you get my point like yeah case, and then we could we could scale that up even when it comes to people and interpersonal relationships you know i don't think and i'm gonna make a bold statement I don't think if you are doing what you're doing with purpose, intentionality, passion, commitment, and you really own the trajectory of your learning, for your craft, whatever the whether it be um housekeeping, whether it be scientific work, whether it be medicine, pharmacy, exercise, physiology, you know, no one is ever small in what they do if they're doing it with excellence. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm pointing to. You know, God's given us, and I'm going to speak from my pers- my faith perspective. You know, God has called us all to different things. We all have different gifts, and if we do those excellently, and we honor Him and the people in our lives, with them, we are as large and as giant as anyone else on this planet. Doesn't Amen. mean we have the same role. Doesn't mean we have the same function. But just because I'm not an eye doesn't make me um, less than the eye. I'm a B D A R, which is very important. You know. You get yeah. my point, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah love- I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because you know sometimes people feel as if you know if I'm not pursuing medicine or if I'm not pursuing this or if I'm not pursuing MD PhD or if I don't have some type of prestige, some type of uh, popular and prestigious uh, title and role, then what I'm doing doesn't really matter. But I would venture to say that you can actually quantify how much it matters by seeing the impact that you able to have. By being excellent in your craft and also making an impact on people's lives, you have metrics to quantify that. You just don't have to be subjective and say it matters because I think so. You can quantify that. And yeah. so look at the data. See, it does matter. I'm making an impact. Look how people's trajectory is changing. Look how people's lives are improving. You know, you can track the impact and track how much it is significant. And we see that even in the literature with statistical significance and all the good stuff. But anyway. I love, way to speak light into that i love that because it could be such a dangerous mindset right because it's like md and then it's like md phd and then it's like well, I <laughs> MD, phd with six, six, yeah, with like six, with board six certified. people in the family yeah board yeah. certified a fellowship of, yeah. a part of different societies i have have a super family all of my family members are super people you know right type of thing. yeah but you, you have to it's a never-ending race if you go on that trajectory mm-hmm. It's basically a destination policy, if you will. When I reach this point, then I'll be happy. When I reach this point, then I will be successful, quote unquote. So how have you been adaptive and creative in your student and working career? What do you say, what would you say has been um, uh, some really highlighting moments uh, while you're at Taylor, Ball State, and even in your working career? What really stands out to you that you can share to the audience? Yeah, I think uh, so between Taylor, Ball State and my working career, it's kind of varied a little bit because I actually was not the best student starting out uh, oh, right. and, right. and mostly because I didn't know, you know, the, the field of exercise was so broad that I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. And uh, and when you don't know where you want to go, you can kind of be stuck. Right. And and unless you have a forward thinking mentality of, OK, I'm going to work as hard as I can in the present it's going to be a little bit challenging to get motivated. So for me, it was, it was challenging until probably junior year till I found what I actually wanted to do. Um, and that was really helping people with their health through exercise. Now, once that passion clicked, the, the rest was history. You know, I got straight A's. I was doing phenomenal. I was involved with everything. I had like three different things, three different jobs that I was working at because I loved it and I was passionate about. It. So I think something that stands out, at least at Taylor, it was the passion finding something that you care about um and i would just dive deep into it i was that i would dive deep into relationships that's that's one of the, the big things you know i could be in front of a patient and i could have great conversations they would trust me um they would share i would be able to help them 
Uh, and in fact, so much that many people that I helped in the past still reach out to me to this day just to talk, right? And I think that's a huge blessing. So I think Taylor, the big thing that stood out was uh, really diving deep into relationships and learning the value of that. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Completely agree with you. I can think about even just this conversation today is proof positive of the rapport that me and you have as good mm-hmm. friends. That's point one. Point two, I can think of all of my friends from Taylor and even Georgia Tech. And even some of the faculty, you know, it brings up another principle, being able to honor people and mm. honor the time that you spend with people, you know, yeah. recognizing it all boils down to treating people right, if you're, if you're really honest, how to treat people, you know, you have to honor people based off of the time that they're giving you. And what does that mean practically? It means when you show up in a space, you show up as having done your homework, you show yeah. up having prepared well. It also means that, you know, you operate with a... a Really, yeah, you could say strategic humility, but like a practical sense of humility in that, you know, I value you, you value me, you are the patient in the space, but I'm also someone who can learn from you about what you're experiencing. You know, I I don't know everything about what's going on, but I do know many things and I can help you based off the information that you provide. So how have you sought or found the right environment for you to thrive professionally and intellectually? What process do you go through, Julio? And you're trying to figure out is this place going to work for me you know we we know that uh, as people of faith that we belong wherever god's will leads us however you still have to go through the process of figuring out what that place is or where it is you know practically how do you do that wow such great question such a great question and I, there's some trial and error and it really depends right uh yeah. it, it, there's there's trial and error and it, it really depends you know but i think learning the first step is learning to thrive and grow in whatever the place that God has placed you in, um, you know, because you may not like it at first. It might be challenging in different ways. You know, Taylor was great. Ball State was great, but it was challenging in different areas uh, for the yep. Yep. and learning to thrive in that is the first step. Uh, and then after that is, I think, submitting to wherever you are, right? I think it could be very easy. It's like, well, I don't want to do that. Well, I don't want to do this. I'm, I have my own priorities, right? Uh, but learning to submit and learning to see what can you uh, take away from that experience, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I would say in areas that you don't really like, right? Um, and then the second thing in terms of how do you determine what's what's kind of best for you, where you should go? Uh, I really think exposure. Number one, you got to get exposure. You can't just say, well, I want to do this, but you have no idea. Once you try, you might actually hate it, you know? Um, I had experience in cardiac rehab, pulmonary rehab, but I had no experience ever minimal experience when it came to uh, cancer rehab Uh, and I I gave that a try because I didn't really know too much uh, but I knew that pulmonary and cardiac weren't as high of a passion for me Uh, so then I went into cardiac into sorry into cancer rehab uh, and I loved it I absolutely loved working in cancer rehab it was challenging I worked with kids I worked with adults I had different challenges but I really really loved it the biggest challenge then came do I want to be research focused or do I want to be hospital focused, right? Oh, and yeah. That yep. really depends on your personality. Echo is for all people. <laughs> go yep. ahead, go ahead. And uh, for me, I love the both a lot. I think one gave me a break from the other, if that makes sense. So yeah. I like the, the, the having both. However, being in the hospital, it becomes very challenging in terms of uh, at least for me, which is why I decided to go on my own venture, I realized I could help more people outside of the hospital because they have their own system and it works great for them. But only if you're part of that hos- the hospital does it help you. You know, I can't help somebody in Iran. I can't help somebody in New Mexico, in California, in New York, right? I can only help somebody in Miami. And that's pretty much it. Maybe West Palm, you know, they have to drive and... I had I learned really quickly it's like I want to be able to help more people in different places mm-hmm. because you kind of have to be some level of socioeconomic status some level of um, of being close to be able to take partake in the hospital you know mm-hmm. and not many people have that opportunity in terms of insurance in terms of money in terms of cost you know I had to work with a couple patients who were like yeah I love everything about it but I can't afford here so I have to switch hospitals and now I can't help them right um so i really wanted to create a space for where everyone can go and that was really the big driver for me and learning to help more people uh, rather than just kind of being told okay this is how you're going to do it and 
it may or may not help as many people. Um, well, I guess you, you not to say to anything it. bad about the hospital system. It's just it wasn't for me, right? My passion was just to know what works for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. To know where you, you have to know where you can fit in terms of seeing yourself grow, learn, and also have an impact. Depending on the impact that you want to have. You know, do you want to be incremental in your impact or do you want to really be transformative on a global scale? And yeah. those are questions you have to ask yourself. You know, like I've heard of, I've spoken to a lot of people in this podcast and, and the podcast has also been rebranded as people have seen us in the postings so on social media. Um, in those conversations, one of the main things that stands out is not so much about answers, but it's the question that you ask yourself as you go through these transitions. Mm-hmm. Do I really want to do do I like what I'm doing and what do I see myself or how do I see myself making an impact in that space? Space where I see myself making an impact, those are questions you have to ask yourself. So what have been your most effective and impactful ideas to date in exercise physiology and cancer exercise physiology? What really gives you a niche? Um, do you think it's how you train people or how you are able to form rapport with them as you spoke about earlier? What do you, what are your impact on creative ideas? Yeah, so twofold with that, with that answer. Number one, I help more than just kind of cancer survivors. I kind of, my goal is to give a niche or an area for survivors to really work out in. And they don't really have that. Working in the hospital, I realized most of them were going to LA Fitness or Crunch Fitness or whatever local gym because they had that um, or different trainers online. And many of those trainers may not, for the most part, know exactly what they need you know after breast surgery after you know uh, chemo after uh, immunotherapy those can really weaken your body in many many different ways you know you can have hypoxia sarcopenia a lot of weakness a lot of pains a lot of aches so really learning how to properly help them is very very important right it's it's very it's instrumental to really seeing them grow um, in fact, I have heard many stories of kind of cancer survivors going to a local gym and breaking a collarbone because the, the trainer didn't know how to treat somebody with metastasis, right? Which is terrible for, for the patient, right? Uh, so I really wanted to give them a safe and effective place to actually work out in and actually learn and grow and treat the symptoms, but also be able to grow after treatments, right? So a little bit of a twist that I also bring is kind of that rehab aspect of things. But they also kind of get this strength and conditioning, functional fitness aspect, right? My goal is to see them get stronger. I want to see them move better. I want to see their mobility get better, you know. Uh, The more fit they become, the greater they are for resisting any disease. So that's that's a big thing, yeah. Yeah, I I would just think it's very interesting, you know. Even in the midst of the challenge, you are you're learning how to become strong as you encounter and as you deal with the challenge that you're facing. Yeah, so that, that's good. So what are your priorities and how do you keep them as priority? How do you keep your priorities in check for you? Yeah. For priorities, it's I think it's okay for it to change daily. That's something I'm learning. Yeah. You know, sometimes you kinda of set goals of one, two, three, and you know, that might work for Monday, but Tuesday is gonna be different. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is what's the schedule like? What really gives you energy? And prioritizing the things that kind of give you energy without letting go of the things that don't. So, for example, what's the biggest thing you want to get done today? For me, it's creating the systems that will ultimately help my patients, right? Whether, mm-hmm. you know, it's somebody just trying to lose weight, it's somebody looking to get started with the cardio, what system can I build for them to kind of take it and run with it, you know? Um, the second part of that is I'm going to be there by their side every single step of the way. So systems first, and then it's also uh, being there for my patients. You know, I got a couple emails um, saying, asking a couple questions, how can I help them, right? Uh, So I'm there to provide them with support. Uh, And then the third thing I would say is uh, my personal requirements and responsibilities. And I, I say one, two, three, not in the order of priorities. I'm saying like, the overarching things that need to get done daily if that makes sense Mm -hmm. Um, and that's my health making sure that I'm exercising it's my family making sure that I'm spending time with them it's you know going out for walks connecting with my wife emotionally mentally and being able to have fun conversations with people I love and care for 
as well as church, right? So every day is a little bit different. You know, Sunday is going to be more family focused. Um, mornings are going to be more focused on myself. And then afternoons and evenings are going to be more focused on systems. So every day kind of changes and shifts a little bit. But I think those are the three things that kind of in my head need to get done one, one way or another. And it's going to change a little bit and vary throughout the week. Okay, good. good. That's very good. Yeah, man. So um, how have you maintained vision and teamwork in your workspace? How do you maintain vision and teamwork in your workspace? You kind of discuss some of those things in terms of system and stuff like that. So what, what else do you do? Do you like it's practically like use Google Calendar, hard copy calendars? Um, how do you manage your time? Uh, I use a little bit of mixture. I, I like to do hard copy, you know, pen and paper. <laughs> I get an ad glance agenda. Uh, yeah, I get an ad glance agenda and then just make sure things get done, you know? Yeah, good, good, good. It looks a little crazy sometimes. Here's, here's a picture of it, but I kind of have it spurted out, you know, 30 minute increments, everything that kind of needs to get done for uh, for the day that way. So I like at a glance, uh, but it, it'll kind of change a little bit. Okay, so as we start to wrap up, I'll ask you two more questions. Um, do you have any advice for those one who to pursue the field you're currently working in? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing to know is number one, dive deep towards helping people. Mm -hmm. Dive deep into the literature. Really know your stuff. The more you know, the more you're going to help. Um, and number three would be learn to communicate. Learn to communicate hard things in a simple manner to connect with individuals. Because you can learn too much uh, and then not know how to actually apply it or how to make it practical or how to teach it to somebody in a way that's going to help them change their lives. So dive deep into literature, connect, and learn to communicate would be the biggest three things. So what has been some of the most beneficial advice you have received? Uh, I would say study what you want to learn or study something that you care about reading. So the next one would be if you don't know what you want to do, dive into areas of interest, right? You're not going to know until you experience it. Uh, and shadow people, take internships, get a job, you know, work different jobs to see what you like. Um, that's the only way I found out that I was interested in health more than just performance is mm -hmm. by getting internship and, and working with, with people and on their health. I did diabetes prevention, cardiac rehab, phase four. And that's really where I learned that. Uh, and also kind of, it sounds really cliche, but uh, be yourself in the sense of uh, learn what you're passionate about. Learn what gives you energy learn what you want to do and that's a process of almost discovering yourself you know uh, mm -hmm. because that's what's going to give you life you know life is you're going to work for 40 50 60 years whatever you, you're going to do and you're going to hate it it's not worth it that's not living mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. be different i think you need to look truly look at yourself and say what am i passionate about and how can i make this happen yeah and that's a very good point you made be yourself and you know being yourself doesn't mean you throw away values it doesn't mean you throw away standards. It doesn't mean you throw away having a growth profile of growth trajectory. Being yourself, as you alluded to, you know, refers to really understanding what works best for you. So yeah, man, Julio, this was so good. This was such a good conversation, man. That's why I like to I throw it up with my friends every now and again. But yeah, it's so good to have you on the podcast. And for all those listening, uh, feel free to check out On Color Fit. The episode description will list details about the work that Julio is currently doing. So once again, this is a new student pharmacist podcast experience. We're so glad to have you listening. Please note that this is not intended for medical advice, consultation, or suggestions. Please consult your local and board certified and state certified healthcare professional for specific medical suggestions, advice, and consultation. Once again, thanks again for listening and all the best. Thanks for listening to the podcast series The New Student Pharmacist, where we discuss chemistry and pharmacy, as well as leaders in pharmacy careers, community, and chemistry and pharmacy research. We encourage you to support the work we are doing and follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts by subscribing for free. We are so glad that you were able to tune in today. Note, the views on the podcast represent those of my guest, and I take care and all the best.
are very important, especially to us here at the New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant. Vous êtes très important, surtout pour nous ici au New Chemist Podcasting Group. Votre écoute est significative. Usted es muy importante, especialmente para nosotros aquí en The Nuche Mist Podcasting Group. Usted escuchando, es significativo. Você é muito importante, especialmente para nós do The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Você ouvindo, é significativo. Είστε πολύ σημαντικοί, ειδικά για εμάς εδώ στο The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Το να ακούς είναι σημαντικό. Sie sind sehr wichtig, besonders für uns hier bei The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Es ist wichtig, dass du zuhörst. Je bent erg belangrijk, vooral voor ons hier bij The New Chemist Podcasting Group. Dat je meeluistert, is veel betekenend. You are very important. Especially to us here at The New Chemist Podcasting Group. You listening in is significant.